Hello everyone, I am Gander, the Gaming Clan, Vato Clan, and the video that you are about to see does have part of the game missing in it. And the reason for that is because when Twitch TV, the website, uh, began to delete their archived past broadcasts, some of the video segments were not able to be saved when I ripped all of the video. So in the interest of having as complete a Dominion history as we possibly can here on YouTube, uh, I'm uploading this video anyway, even though a portion of it is missing. Uh, so check down in the video description below for picks and bans or something like that, or to see who won in the case of it being a video that's missing the end of the game. So enjoy this little peek into the uh, past of Dominion, uh, in this case a fragmented peek. Uh, thank you for watching. And with permission from uh, Dominate uh, Dominion slash Dominate Gaming's owner, the Feedski, here you are. To be what is needed to take down that Elise, and I think we have one more revive coming up. Yes, here's the Annie to bring this to a two v two. Not putting the damage that she needs though, because they're both very tanky. Tibber's coming down, and she's going to be able to pick up at least one of these kills here, and hopefully the turret. Yes, that was a very nice play by Half-Hearted there, coming straight in on the revive and using Tibbers to its full effect to take down to take down Jarvan. Yeah, and in the bot lane... Yeah, and Milo in the bot lane, they're just kind of pushing the minions back and forth. Vi actually coming out behind on some of the um, trades here, but Infeed getting caught out by Dinov, coming in for the gank. He has the acceleration gate, he has gone hammer form, and Blue is looking like they're going to try to come and support him right there. So we'll see if they're able to make a, a gank happen down this bottom lane onto that Vi, who has great burst damage onto that Elise right now. Yes, and paying uh, Evelyn child support, geez, is trying to make a push down onto this Boneyard, but doesn't look like they'll be able to do much. Elise falling to Vi, not an issue at all. Yeah, meanwhile in top lane, Sauron and Half-Hearted trying to defend the top windmill here. Um, they do have armor coming in now, who's closed the gap on Abuda Rice. The cleanses come down on Kog'Maw, trying to run out of there and continue to do damage from afar. They got the point that they wanted, and Abuda Rice also is very strong. We didn't talk about this with Kog'Maw, but the Living Artillery does a good job at stopping people from capping and making the turret focus them. See if Sauron, along with Half-Hearted and armor, can come up here, get the damage down, Annie has the stun up. Elise is coming up as well at full health, but Dinov is here to make something happen. Blueberry's jumped in with a stun. Half-Hearted taking a little bit of damage there. Urgot now in a lot of trouble. Drops the exhaust on there, but Elise here to pick up a double kill, and it looks like Pazel and is going to come out ahead of this one. Dinov spinning as best he can. Elise going down. See if he can get the kill. Dinov not wanting to chase and going back after Zabers to get this point down. And in the bot lane, Nyx, maybe it's Nyx, is, you never know, has taken that quarry, I think that's a quarry, and will be able to take that with no issue whatsoever, and will be able to get that 3 cap for, for feel, the, feel the Vibe. Yeah, they dropped the 3 cap there, they actually got the quest objective right there by getting shut down, but they already have the 10% damage buff, Dinov grabbing a kill on a Jarvan before he goes back, they did have the three clap for a little bit, but the quest objective also gives you a little bit extra points off the clock there. Sauron's up top. I don't think Leona's going to be able to stop much here. She does have a solar flare up, but she's going to die very quickly as Half-Hearted and Sauron get onto this turret to take it down. Yes, and looks like they're going to have no issue whatsoever except for Jarvan, but I do not think he'll be able to do much. Yeah, Jarvan only rocking the armor right now from Warden's Mail and Grev's Spectral Lantern. Does not want to get bursted by Half-Hearted. Has about the same HP as Half-Hearted right now. Armor trying to get in there. Kog'Maw not in a very good position whatsoever. See if Kog'Maw can get out of there. Does have the Speed Shrine, so able to reposition to more of an AD carry spot. Uh, meanwhile, down bottom, the Boneyard was neutralized. There wasn't any kills going down there, except for Elise dropping. Probably... For that neutralize, Garen jumping on Jace, but deciding to switch up top, where they have a advantage of a four v three. Well, Elise is down. 
Yeah, no one really on Phase 11 Shadow Support really has any magic resist items, so Annie will definitely be able to do tons of damage coming into these fights. Yeah, you don't need a Trinity Force to do tons of damage. All you do is need to be a little girl with a teddy bear. But once again, Buddha Rice not being able to get protected. Dinov doing all of the damage on there in the middle of two people. Damascene Justice taking out that Kogma. He did it 1v1 with Jarvan and uh, Booberry on Leona there. They just weren't able, able to protect him. And he's actually the one champion I didn't think would close the cap on Kogma and be able to kill him there. No, and Saren doing all of the damage that he can, which is definitely a lot, and showing his strong pick. Yeah, we have the Vi looking to jump in, almost getting the gap closer onto Evelyn. One excessive force and an auto attack, a lot of damage to deal with there. But they're going to jump onto the Urgot. Urgot going down, in feed in a lot of trouble, jumping the exhaust onto the Vi, which is enough to save his life. Now Annie in a lot of trouble, trying to burst down that Kog'Maw, half helping him with two spells, but it wasn't enough. Uh, meanwhile, Booberry is trying to slow down the minion push onto that refinery and doing a good job as they rotate down to the Boneyard. They might be able to go for this Boneyard right now and take it if they want to go for it. Yeah, Booberry just pretty much stalling out the game from Garen and Maokai and letting them not really be able to do much. Yep, a kill coming down for Vi as she defends this. Cataclysm coming down, wants the dunk, gets the kill, but defensive garrison from Garen coming down, leaving Blueberry to go. The exhaust coming down as well. Zabers and uh, Leona just running with their tails between their legs, not able to get a kill as Half-Hearted comes back. Full HP, the fire ablazing, the stun is up. Good stuns there by Blueberry. Might be able to actually get out of this as she has Jace to help her out defend this turret. Yeah, and half hearted running right by the bush, having no idea that Zabers was in there recalling. Yeah, not at all. Dinov actually being really strong right now on Garen. And so far, he's 7 1 and 6, and just being a terror for Pays Evelyn Child Support. Yeah, and it looks like they're trying to catch out Sauron here just to shut him down, but he's doing a lot of damage. Doesn't look like he's going to be able to get any help from the rest of his team. He will fall down. Yeah, the Leona also trying to put the CC down onto Dinov and Half-Hearted. Dinov running in directly to the CC, the stun from Computaris, and the percent health damage doing a lot of work right there. And now they're going to turn around, take this windmill, try to get the kill on Half-Hearted, which is going to be very easy. Kog'Maw picking that one up. Dinov at low health, but Armor's here to help defend. Wow, the chunks coming down from Elise. Oh, and, you know, I wasn't there. too sure about that Kogma pick, but it is doing them very good in these team fights. Yes, it is. The defensive garrison came down on the windmill. It wasn't enough to defend the three-man attack they had. Kogma went down. He was their fourth man, but they took down the Annie and, and uh, Maokai, which meant that Garen needed to retreat with low health. And Botlane, by using her ultimate on Jay, is trying to bring him down, but wasn't able to do enough damage. Yeah, Jace does have, with To The Skies and the knockback there at Hammer Form, does have a good job there. There's the reposition going up top. Sauron with the extra mana and, uh, sorry, extra magic and HP. Magic and armor is what I'm trying to say. Magic resistant armor. We're from the swap, able to take out that Elise. But now it's still a 3v3. Zaber's jumping on half-hearted, but deciding to turn around as armor twisted advances him and jumping on him because he is not as tanky as he needs to be at the moment. No, and half hearted trying to run away from that Leona, but that Leona is just sticking to her like glue. Now, there's no repositioner up for Buddha Rice to drum him back in the fight, but the Twisted Advance is on him. He's taking a lot of damage right now. Half hearted being dropped by Zabers in that Cataclysm. Buddha Rice being focused, but they aren't able to capitalize on that kill until they lost Maokai. So it's going to be a 3 to 1 at the end. Jarvan picking up a double kill, and. They end up shutting down Garen there. I'm shocked that they came ahead in that fight. You know, I'm not too shocked that they came ahead because their team comp is very strong. I mean, um, feel the vibes is too, but when it comes down to it, for raw damage, Phase 11 Child Support is doing a lot more than they are. 
Yes, they are. There's a good cocoon. Getting caught out a little bit here is Elise. He does have, she does have Jarvan coming up. The exhaust is down on that Vi. See if they re-engage with Annie here. No Tibbers available. A good dodge on the stun, but a 500 damage crit from Infeed there. And Vi's gonna just back out of there, making sure they don't get this quest objective and defending the two points that they still have left. Yeah, it looks like Pazel and Child Support are going to push for this Boneyard and try to extend their lead. Yeah, they did kind of put all their eggs in one basket, though. Uh, Maokai is able to go recap the refinery right now. Comfortar is noticing this. He's going to try to back in the bush there. Zabers cannot 1v1 Sauron right now, and he's realizing that as he gets swapped by the repositioner. But Dynov's going to go down to the Jason Kogma. Sauron next. The ult onto Infeed, but I feel like... He's not the only problem. They had two carries back up. Killing Jarvan is just not enough as he revives to come up top and defend that refinery. I feel like that Urgot ultimate wasn't the best choice because he threw himself right into three people, not paying out well for himself. No, and you're right, and he used it on the Jarvan. He didn't suppress one of the higher damage duos that he could have, and that all of a sudden is a five cap for pays of and child support. Coming out so strong early was Feel the Vibe, but now they're getting caught out and downed one by one. Blueberry will trade the life of Maokai, and Leona is uh, is not going to be able to do much when she dies. Kogma going down as well. Four people there. They're going to be able to take back this point and hopefully gain some ground very quickly because they are bleeding the points out and now down by about 50. Yeah, and they're trying to hold on, but I mean, that 5 cap for a solid 30 seconds really set them back. Yeah, they came out really strong, and they just haven't been able to deal with this mid-game damage coming out of the Jace and the Kog'Maw. They couldn't protect Kog early, but now Kog hasn't even had to use Cleanse in quite some time. Half-Hearted getting caught out by a great Solar Flare there. Jarvan jumping in for the dunk. Half-Hearted dropping a good amount of damage before she goes down on that Annie, but... Blueberry just sitting in the team. Garen going to pick up that kill with the help of Urgot. Infeed knocking one person back, but you can't knock two back. And Buddha is coming here, hopefully to lay down some damage as they try to disengage. Oh, the damage coming out from, from Infeed and Buddha Rice here. Just dropping Dynov and them not picking up that kill is going to be very detrimental to them trying to come back in this game. Yeah, and um, Logo is right. Pay seven on child support will not let this advantage go, and they will extend it and hopefully pick up the win. Yeah, Kogma doing what Kogma does best, dropping the living artillery in onto those points, slowing the caps, and just delaying them without having to work hard for it. He doesn't have to get close whatsoever. Now that he has a few ranks on that ultimate, a couple ranks, excuse me, has two ranks, coming up in the third rank very soon. Um, and we'll see... I mean, Feel the Vibe needs to catch somebody out, and they need to do it fast. And uh, Mayo Kai getting the shutdown on Jace, no issue at all. It looks like we're going to have a fight. Yeah, Buddha Rice, he is there, but Armor Twisted Advance trying to get out of the fight. And we'll see, there's the the uh, Assault and Battery on Buddha Rice, but they didn't have the follow-up damage they needed to get it. And Buterai still alive, still shredding, finally going down. But meanwhile, Elise grabbing a triple kill, not being touched for that entire fight. And I think that they're going to be able to snowball this game into the win. Oh, it looks like Buterai's disconnected. We got a quick pause here. It looks like he reconnected right away. Yeah, he paused it himself, so uh, he must be having some connection issues. Yeah, what do we have for builds? Anything special coming out that you noticed? Well, not really, but I noticed the Sanguine Blade pickup by Vi just to do that extra damage. And also the Runic Bulwark on Maokai. That was a very strong pick to give the team extra resistances in those team fights so they're not losing too hard. Yeah, I agree, but at the same time, I feel like Vi went almost too heavy in damage and lifesteal. It seems like she's just getting, she's getting chunked before she can get in there and do a lot of damage. And although she's 7, 6, and 3, she hasn't been able to really just put the kibosh on some of these carries in the middle of the fights. Yeah, well, the thing about Vi is you can have a lot of damage, but you're going to need that health so you're not getting deleted instantly in those fights. 
Yeah, the only one with a pretty much pure damage build right now is that Cogmaw. Phantom Dancer, a Bloodthirster, the Phage for a little bit of kiting and chasing, and a Vamp Scepter, most likely going to get the Sanguine Blade. And 8-8-11 eight, eight, and doesn't seem like a good score, but every time they kill Cogmaw, they lose the fight. Every time they don't kill Cogmaw, they lose the fight. And they're really spending all of their ults and summoners to get in there to exhaust him and jump on him, but even when they do kill him, he doesn't need to be alive for the Pays Evelyn Child Support to finish off the rest of their teams. That is right, and also JSP of that Infinity Edge is going to be dealing a lot of damage to some champions in those team fights. Yeah, that's true. Sauron does not have the Iceborne Gauntlet, so he is reliant uh, on that Trinity Force, hopefully to get the slows that he needs to continually do damage. Uh, Urgot, as you know, has a very short auto attack range. Yes, and Elise running for her life from Dynov and Armor, and it looks like she might be able to take out. Nope, <laughs> we'll not get anything, and we'll get shot down by that sword. Yeah, the Damascian Justice coming right on top and impaling that spider into the ground. Game over for Elise. They might be able to make this a windmill here. Garen getting caught out by Jarvan. He did go down fairly quickly, but they're not killing Budokal Rice fast enough before Captain Blueberry is going to come in. The kill going to Kog'Maw as a revenge from that passive. Half-hearted blowing up Infeed, but I don't think it's going to be enough. One more auto-attack. Infeed will get the kill at almost 0 HP, and that one bar is enough for Infeed to auto-attack, get himself back up. Armor in a lot of trouble here, and I think that's going to signify the end of the game. Unless Vi can get Comptarius down and get this point immediately. No, she didn't have enough health. Not enough there. The lifesteal did a good amount of work right there, but it doesn't seem like it was quite enough to take down Confidarius there. And Sauron going to be the next one to go down as Paisevlin Child Support is going to go undefeated for another week. They lost the one game, but the best of three, they came out as the victors. No, I'm really shocked by this because by looking at picks, I thought that Field of Vibe would be able to take this game, but I'm sure, but I'm noticing that just pure outplaying is definitely what put plays Evelyn Child Support right in the lead for this one. Yeah, they did a very good job at working their team comp through the mid game. I mean, once they hit that 12 minute mark or so, the almost 15 minute mark, they were just dominating. Every move they made was countering out Field of Vibe, and they're going to win this 2-1 for your Dominate Dominion 44 victors. Yep, and that was great games that we saw tonight. Yeah, very good games. Always enjoyable being here. Um, I am Skill Factory. Catch me at Skill Factory LOL. Make sure that you guys check out DominateTT.com for the 3v3 tournaments that are coming up. Uh, March 16th will be the first one. You can check them out uh, through Mobifier as well when you sign up for these tournaments. They are partnered there. Modifier helping Dominate Dominion. Dominate Dominion helping Mobifier. Uh, lastly, I am at Skill Factory LOL. This is About 74 Babies. Grab them on Twitter. It is exactly that, at About 74 Babies. And if you guys want to play versus Reds on Tuesdays and Thursdays, feel free to join us. I'm sorry, Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Wednesday night being um, Riot versus Community. And we play a lot of fun modes as well. They are on the Dominion map. We usually use the Arab type of thing. And uh, I will play you guys out with some music. I'm glad everybody came here, and I'm happy to cast this for the feed ski. And I'll catch you guys next week, hopefully, for Dominate Dominion number 45.